He walked out of a state prison this morning after serving just over five years behind bars. Back in 2016, Pew admitted to sexually abusing a child, but his crimes may never have come to light had it not been for the courage of his victims and a 7 Action News investigation. Tonight, 7 investigator Ross Jones has more on how the survivors of Pew's abuse are responding to his release. The defendant is prepared to plead guilty to count four and five. The last time we saw Charles Pugh was in this courtroom. After years of denials, he finally admitted in October 2016 to sexually abusing a 14-year-old boy. And while many others have since said Pugh abused them too, only one sent him to prison. The shame that he put on myself, on the countless other young men who, who have dealt with him, um, he now has to feel that for the rest of his life. This morning, just before 8 a.m., Pew was released from the Bellamy Correctional Facility in Ionia after just over five years behind bars. His sentence is over, but his victims will never be. He can let go of his anger toward Charles Pugh himself, but he can't let go of the feelings that he has for the victims. He knows that none of them sleep, as, sleep well at night just like he doesn't. Attorney Bill Sykley represents the first young man to report Pew to police. We are not naming him because he says he was the victim of a crime. While a student at Detroit Public Schools, he was groomed by Pew through his mentorship program. Text messages show the then city council president pressured the high school senior to send him nude videos in exchange for money and gifts. When his mother found out, she called Channel 7. I've always said to you that I think the real hero of the Charles Pugh story was my client's mother. This would have never stopped had she not come forward and called you. I don't owe you any explanation. Pugh would resign from the city council and flee to New York City, where we found him waiting tables. Bill Sykley says if the young man's mother had never come forward... He'd probably be mayor of the city of Detroit, wouldn't he? He's very smart. Uh, he's very talented got away with it for a long, long time because of his talents. But even after Pew's sexual exploitation was revealed, his victim was tormented by peers and on social media. Even today, knowing that his decision to come forward triggered Pew's downfall, he's not sure if the torture was worth it. If you ask anyone, we've, they'll tell you, oh, we've got to protect our minors from these predators. And we know how to do it, but we don't do it. We don't encourage people to come forward. We don't protect people to come forward. When he's released, Pew will be required to wear a GPS tether for six months. He's ordered not to have contact with anyone under 17 unless he's received written permission from their parents. And he can be subjected to a polygraph at any time if ordered by his parole agent. Pew could have served another 10 years in prison, but the parole board deemed him ready for release. What kind of counseling did he get? What kind of treatment did he get? Does he have remorse, real, true remorse for what he did? Because that's what's important to them. Him, him spending time in prison in and of itself doesn't do anything for anybody. From Detroit, Ross Jones, 7 Action News. Ross, thank you so much. We do have a statement tonight from the mother of the former high school student who Pew groomed through his mentorship program. It reads in part, I pray that his predatorial behavior has ceased and he has received some type of counseling and therapy. I'm afraid, however, that history will repeat itself. I did not have the resources or the power to fight alone, and I hope others will realize how important it is that when they see something, they should say something.